couching is done by taking a sharp object like a needle or this a thorn guy had and ever up so hobbies, gently yo. stabbing their eye hole at weird angles until the lens moves out of the way. No lasers, no sedatives, no paralytics, just a rusty old just pen trust and me, some I got elbow a grease the way God intended. God. Welcome to Chicago Reacts. Today the Chicago crew will be reacting to Salmonella's pre-industrial surgeries. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to see more of our content. This is worrisome. Hey kids, Hi. had a bad day? Well, yeah. could be worse. You could be living in a world without modern anesthetic. Today, we'll be talking about some surgical procedures carried out long before the development of medicine as we know it today. Now, once you go back a certain distance, the line between operation and mutilation is pretty thin. Mm. So, for our purposes, surgery refers to any bodily manipulation carried out with the intent of fixing some injury or illness. Fair. And away we go. The very first surgery that we have historical evidence for dates as far back as 6500 BC. It's called trepanning, which is a nice word for carving someone's frickin' skull open using nothing but a rock. Oh. Maybe a rock on a stick if you were lucky. In all seriousness though, you can see that a good deal of care went into the procedure, which lets us know that this isn't just the result of random injury. Many That's skulls even hurt. showed signs of healing around the holes, meaning plenty of the people who underwent this whole thing just got up and went about their day afterwards. <laughs> Alright, hold on you say. Uh, yeah. This all sounds bad uh, guano insane. Nice. No way this was that common of an occurrence. Well, friend, if you've been watching this channel long enough, you should know that if you give human beings the benefit of the doubt, chances are they'll prove you wrong. In fact, so far, over 1,500 Japan skulls have been dug up all across the globe, from Europe to China and even the Americas. This means that between 5 and 10% of all skulls that we've found from the Neolithic period have had at least one man-made hole scraped into them. To put it this way, based on that data, there's a greater probability of someone born in the late Stone Age having their brain brain matter exposed by some shaman with a chunk of flint than someone born in the USA being a redhead. To this day, nobody really knows why this was such a common practice, but most theories tend to revolve around the idea of releasing some kind of dark supernatural force from the Release patient. The soul Man, I'm getting real sick of the all brain. these evil entities infecting our minds and bodies. <laughs> You can say that again. I tell you, I need these demons wow. like I need a hole People in the head. People have been haunted for a long time. No way. <laughs> Fast forward to 600 BC. Over in India, there lived a guy called Maharshi Susruta. Now, this guy was a medical mastermind. He wrote a treatise known as Susruta Samhita, which described countless different conditions, treatments, and yes, Susruta. even surgeries. One of That's which is the first recorded instance of rhinoplasty. That means nose job. A hornbill's a type of bird. I'm here too. Anyway, here's how it's done according to Susruta. First, you get them plastered, obviously. Okay. Second, you use a leaf to measure out the part of the nose you want fixed. Then, you use the leaf to cut off a flap of skin from the cheek or forehead of the oh. patient. This part's important, though. You gotta remember to leave a little piece of it still attached. Right. Otherwise, you just got a chunk of dirty, dead face meat on your hands. Absolutely. Now, wherever you're looking to stick the new flesh on, you rub that part raw <laughs> with a knife. Also, you're gonna want to stick two plant stalks in their nostrils so their nose keeps its proper oh my shape. God. Slap the skin on, suture it, dust it with licorice powder for some reason, and cover it with cotton. Really Sesame nice oil should way. be regularly applied until the skin is fully healed. If you're like me, I already do that by default, so it shouldn't be an issue. <laughs> Finally, at long last, your sniffer is reborn. Wow. Don't worry, you still look Except like a freak. A just slightly less so. Now. Moving on, our next surgery took place in 10th century Spain on Sancho the First of Leon, otherwise known as Sancho the Fat. Now, normally back in the day, having some meat on your bones was a sign of wealth right. and power and all that. But this guy was like TLC documentary tier, to the point where he could hardly function as a human being. So his mm. constituents said, Greetings, your thickness. Uh, yeah, you can't be king anymore, on account of you keep breaking every horse we give you, and nobody wants to wash between your accordion-like oh, neck folds no more. Mm. After his adipose got him deposed, Sancho decided to seek medical help for his condition, under the oversight of well-reputed physician Hazdai Ibn Shapurut, which is an animal for ha huh, paintbrush aids <laughs> now if there's one thing that medieval man understood it's practicality lap band 
gastric bypass, belly balloon. Yeah. These all exist to help people who don't have the self-control to stop eating so much on their own. Yeah. But Dr. Shapadu didn't believe in beating around the bush. He said, well, why don't we just stop the patient from shoving food into his own greasy maw in the first place? He's gonna I decided to just up, up and stitch the dude's yep. lips together. After the operation, the only nutrients that Sancho received came through a straw in the form of a mixture known as thoriaca, That's which was a complex blend of several herbs, rough. fruits, and seeds, including opium. It was basically the closest thing you could find to lean at the time mm. and lean he became wow. losing around half his weight before ascending to the throne once more oh. so this is the part of the video but where then did I he gain all the, the desires back? of the audience if there's one thing i know you internet people can't get enough of it's things going inside people's eyeballs i can get enough of that let's though. talk about cataract i mean i surgery. can get enough the art of dealing with people's clouded lenses has been around for millennia believe it or not that susruta guy from earlier actually talked about the most common procedure for cataracts for most of civilized history History, which is known as the couching method. Couching is done by taking a sharp object like a needle uh, or a thorn guy had and ever up so hobbies, gently you know. stabbing their eye hole at weird angles until the lens moves out of the way. No lasers, no sedatives, no paralytics, just a rusty old just pen trust and me, some I elbow got a grease the way God intended. God. The majority of the time, this operation didn't work, usually just damaging the already blind eye irreparably. Shocker, right? And even if it did go as planned, you still, you know, didn't have a lens in your eye. So you essentially went from, I can't tell if I'm dead or not, to, ah, yes, it is quite yellow out today. <laughs> <laughs> By God, something moved somewhere. <laughs> a slightly more refined version of this operation is the suction method, which no. dates back to at least the 10th this century AD, horrible. if not older. This procedure is described as requiring, quote, a large incision mm -hmm. in the eye, a hollow needle, mm -hmm. and an assistant with an extraordinary lung capacity. No. Though this reads like the setup to the world's most horrifying party trick, it's actually the bare minimum number of tools needed trick. to completely extract the lens from the eye. Oh, In case you didn't man. pick up on how, Here's a diagram. No, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. This method generally saw a greater success rate and fewer complications than its non-extracting counterpart. So hopefully you can sleep well tonight no. knowing that the number of human beings who have sucked a piece of somebody's living eyeball through a straw is above zero. I, Anywho, mm, mm, let's mm, all just mm, be mm, thankful that, that we live me. in an era where procedures like these are a thing of the past. The suturing now the remember, mouth kids, is even though the surgeries I described the, here do sound pretty easy of, to pull off, please don't try them at home. Thank you for but that. if you do, please put it online. <laughs> week afterwards <laughs> but you know what you can do at home learn stuff about things with brilliant.org <sighs> okay, brilliant's elegant so, ui instead yes i did not need to know any of that so besides the eyeball section what which of those caught your attention uh the 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 rhinoplasty i still can't figure out what i, I would have to actually read the material i'm actually kind of curious as to what kind of a nose issue a person would have to justify the level of mutilation that would be required for that surgery. I'd, I'd be very fascinated to learn what the justification for it was. These things happened. These odd, horrible, horrible surgeries. But if they did not exist, then people would not learn how to improve upon them and make them more efficient and actually do the job that they're supposed to do. So let us all be grateful that we live in a modern day and age where we have advanced technology, medicine, and you know the proper facilities in which you know getting these ailments you know treated oh my gosh it gives me the heebie-jeebies just a, all you need is boy with good suck a straw and a needle and that hurts that hurts but i, I would, don't they like isn't lasik just like laser removing part of your eye in the first place i know that that's not cataract surgery but I knew that would be disturbing. I can't handle imagining a mutilation. I think there's I think there's a piece of me that is too strong of an empath. <laughs> Gross. And the sucking of the lens, like what oh like to be the little kid that does that. I mean, if it's true that little kids did that. I mean, would you be traumatized? I don't know. Too much. All right, the, the, the caveman brain thing has me really weirded out, man. Why is that all over the world? Why? Like, kept, was it aliens? Was it aliens? Did aliens mess with our brains? Was it? It probably was aliens. I don't know. But everything else, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, it didn't make me feel better about not having health care. Would you ever want a trepan? No.
No. I don't want any of those things. Ever. Never. Okay. <laughs> No, dude, come on, man. Get the hell out of here with that <laughs> shit. I don't know what the modern day cataract surgery is, but I'm just, well, I'm glad that it doesn't involve potentially, you know, like my best friend Pete just sucking on a straw at my eye. Gosh. Ugh. Back in the good old days. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos. If you want us to react to something, write it to us in the comments below. See you next time.